Okay, so now let's talk about the tests themselves. When we compare a number to another number, we have a number of operators that we can use. We have greater than and less than. We have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And then we also have not equal to. Some folks ask whether you can use this operator. I don't believe that this operator is available in Python. You could try it. I think we tried it once. Not equal to is the bang equals. And then we have equal to. One of the uh, easiest mistakes to make is to use a single equals. But what is a single equals used for? It's used for assignment, right? So Python will actually reject this syntax. If you want to check for equivalence with new numbers, you're going to use the double equals sign. When we talk about strings, normally we're just interested to know whether one string is equal or equivalent to another. So we use the double equals sign with that as well. As it turns out, you can use greater than or less than, but we, that's very rarely used, so we're not going to cover that here. This particular code is saying, uh, asking the user to enter Q to quit. If they do enter Q, if X is actually equivalent to the string Q, that is one character, then it'll print that and then exit. Otherwise, it'll keep going. Actually, just uh, to clarify, let me ask you what would happen if I didn't, if I did type Q. If I didn't type Q, let's start with that. This is a little bit of review. If I didn't type Q, let's say I type W, the if test would be false, and then where would I go? To line 26. Okay, here's your next test. Let's say I did type Q. It would go from 21 to 23. That would be true. We would go to 24. And now here's your test. Where would we go after line 24? The answer is line 26. Why? Because the if test doesn't have an exit there. The if, uh, the if block, rather. The if block simply says execute and then let's move on. We could, of course, change program flow to include an exit, which means that after line 24, we'd get to 25 and then the program would end. The last thing I'll show you with tests is compound tests. When we want to test to see if a variable is one of two conditions, or if we want to ask whether maybe one variable is uh, compared to one value and another, we can use a compound test. The AND is used. If this is true and that is true, then the whole thing is true. On the other hand, we might ask if this is true or this is true or this is true, then the whole thing is true. So with AND, you can say that it, the whole thing won't be true. The whole statement or the whole test won't be true unless both of the tests on um, the left and right side of AND are true, right? They both have to be true. If this is true and that is true, then OK. With an OR, only one of these has to be true. If this is true or that is true or this other thing is true. One thing I've seen students do, and you must be careful not to do this, is this. They take line 20 to mean line 15. If you have a compound test, you have to have a complete test on either side of the OR or AND. You can't say if A equals 0 or 1 or 2. That's not going to work. You need to do it the way we do in line 15, or we have one other way. We could say if a in and then give it a list. Now we haven't looked at lists yet, but this would be your option. If a is one of zero or one or two, that's how we would do a compound test, checking to see if a variable is equal to one of three or multiple values.